creepy Chris Barrett, an employee at Bungie and also the lead director of the new game Marathon, was let go earlier this year from the company for reasons unknown. But what we've actually come to find out very recently is that those reasons are a lot more insidious than we first thought. Yeah, we're like two fucking shady pieces of shit. Like if you've ever thought that Chris and I were fucking squeaky clean people, I'm really sorry because we have never been squeaky clean people. Chris Barrett wasn't just another Bungie employee. No, he wasn't just some lifer at Bungie who'd worked there 25 years. He was the game director for Marathon. All right. So Marathon, if you don't know, is the next big Bungie game. And this is the game that was meant to come out after Destiny 2. And it's also been said that Marathon is the game that's meant to effectively save Bungie from the pretty consistent decline in player numbers and arguably game quality over the last several years. So in the way that Bungie went from Halo and then to Destiny, and that was their main IP, the idea is that Bungie was going to jump from Destiny 2 to Marathon. And the guy that was in charge of Marathon was Christopher Barrett. Now, here's the thing about Christopher Barrett's role vis-a-vis -vis Marathon. The issue is that he isn't just a games director. He's not just a guy with a bunch of talent and experience. And then Bungie said, hey, you're going to be in charge of Marathon. You are going to make this game good. No, 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 no. In fact, Christopher Barrett was the guy that came up with the idea of Marathon in the very first place. And the source of that is uh, this podcast here where they talk about, you know, the, the journey of Marathon from the beginning to becoming, you know, a, a project at Bungie and, and how Chris was responsible for everything. So the, the thing is that Chris came up with the idea at inception. He literally just woke up one day and was like, you know what would be dope? An extraction shooter. And we could do that by resurrecting the Marathon IP and, you know, if I pitch this to, to Bungie, we can drain Destiny 2 of 80% of its people and its resources and put it into this game. That was Chris Barrett's idea. Okay, maybe not the last part, but certainly the first part. And so here's the thing. What Chris did is he got this idea and he pitched this to the executives at Bungie. And he didn't just pitch it once. I mean, this was pitched multiple times. He really effectively had to push this idea through to make it the next big thing right? It, it, it's, it, he had a lot more responsibility for Marathon than you might realize. It, it was literally for coming up with the idea, pitching it to Bungie, getting it started, and then putting it into full development. That was all Christopher Barrett. It was his brainchild. Okay, so now knowing that, what we also know is that Marathon isn't just another game, okay? Uh, Bungie is not like Ubisoft. They can just churn out a whole bunch of different games, throw a whole bunch, bunch of shit at the wall and see what sticks. That's not what Bungie tends to do. Bungie is kind of like a triple A game monogamist. They go from one good game to another good game to another good game. And those are their franchises. You've got Halo, you've got Destiny, and then presumably you, you are going to have Marathon, right? And the thing is that all of the internal reports of Marathon, what people are all saying is that Bungie executives and Bungie senior staff are telling their employers Marathon is do or die. Like this is this is it. This is it. This is the game that's going to continue the future and the legacy of our company. It's Marathon. And this is the game that was Christopher Barrett's brainchild. Well, see, so you might be thinking, well, why is this like a big deal? It's a big deal because Christopher Barrett has saved Bungie more than once. What a lot of people don't remember is that D2 was pretty much on the verge of dying after launch, right? It had launched to a lot of fanfare, but very quickly people realized that this is this is not the Destiny experience, and people were leaving in droves. There were articles saying that Destiny 2 was literally six months away from completely shutting down. And what saved Destiny 2 at that stage was the Forsaken DLC, right? That's what literally turned the entire Destiny franchise around, right? And took it you know, into its glory days. And do you know who was in charge of Forsaken? It was Christopher Barrett. Christopher Barrett had saved D2 once before. And now with Marathon, he was being tasked with saving it again. And that's why I think it's very interesting because when you see, um, you know, this is Rick Kakis here. He says, what a scumbag. They're better off without him. Hey, you're not going to get any argument from me. Like he is a scumbag and they are better off without him. But they're better off without him in the sense of the workplace culture, the vibe, the safety of the place. I'm sure they're better off without him legally. 
But as much as you might hate the guy, as much as you might think that this guy is a deplorable piece of shit, what you can't deny is that he's a very talented lead. He's a very, very talented director who has saved Destiny 2 and saved Bungie on multiple occasions in the past. And right now, as Destiny 2 hit, hits its absolute lowest numbers, right as we're at the very bottom of that trough after what has supposedly been the best DLC ever released, right as we're at that point, you know, where England needs King Arthur the most, King Arthur decides to sexually harass eight women and get his fucking ass fired, okay? So now, what I think people aren't realizing is that Destiny 2 is an absolute lull and the next project that was meant to like save us is now no longer being led by the guy who came up with the idea in the first place. The way that I kind of think about it is it's like Game of Thrones, right? Where imagine you have like a bunch of books or a bunch of seasons that are really, really good, okay? And one person was responsible for that. And then right as you need something to close it all off, that person basically just dies and someone else has to finish the book. Can someone else finish the book in a good way? Probably. But if someone has a track record of doing it pretty well, uh, I mean, you might not be feeling as confident, right? Now, I also saw this tweet over here uh, from Multimac and it says, good Lord, the plot thickens. And it actually does because in, what people don't realize is that this isn't the first time that Chris Barrett has been involved in, you know, what is effectively a scandal you know, surrounding sexual harassment and women. So just listen to this clip for a second. I was still married when Chris and I started dating, fun fact. So was Chris. Chris and I were both married when we started dating. Like if you've ever thought that Chris and I were fucking squeaky clean people, I'm really sorry because we have never been squeaky clean people. I think that's been very fucking obvious, but yeah, we're like two fucking shady pieces of shit. Hey, but we ended up marrying the right person. Listen, I'm going to tell you that if I get involved in this kind of scandal and I have a wife, I'm going to be um, pretty much instructing her to not say what Sarah Daniels just said. If you don't know, this is Sarah Daniels. This is um, Chris Barrett's wife. Um, she's also a D2 content creator, or at least formerly was a D2 content creator. Um, and you'll note that it's kind of interesting because Chris Barrett and Sarah Daniels have always kind of put themselves forward as being people that are you know, champions of feminism, of diversity, of all that kind of stuff, all of the very, very popular social causes right now. And um, it's just kind of interesting that the moment he gets caught, there's a sudden like heel turn, right? There's like a sudden pivot where it's kind of like, well, actually all those things that I talk about as being really, really important, important to me, important to society. Yeah, actually, um, yeah, actually we're, 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 we're bad boys. And so this is particularly relevant because three years ago, there was a um, D2 streamer named Say No to Rage. And uh, I want to start by saying that Say No to Rage was accused quite rightfully of also sexually harassing women. And if you go through all of the, um, like all, all of the evidence, what you'll kind of see is that his behavior was pretty inappropriate. Like I can tell you that if I were a woman or if he was acting that way towards my, my partner or towards my daughter or to my sister, I would be having words with him and I'd probably be throwing hands with him too, right? So I'm not sitting here telling you that Say No to Rage is innocent. I'm certainly not saying, saying to you that like he's a good guy. By all means, go do your own research and come to your own conclusions. But what I will say is that if you consider the sin, if you will, of sexually harassing women, the only way to kind of make that even worse is to sexually harass women and to be a fucking hypocrite about it. Because what happened with Say No to Rage, and guys, if this, uh, if you're enjoying this video, please click like, please sub. Um, if we get 100 uh, likes, I'm going to cover this whole Say No to Rage incident in a lot more depth. Um, basically, what happened is that Sarah Daniels and Chris Barrett went on a massive smear campaign against this guy saying, you know, what a complete degenerate he is for sexually harassing women and doing all that kind of stuff. And they may well have been right. And they they did they conducted that campaign so 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 well that they effectively ended his career. They completely ended his career with the Twitter mob being what it is. But at the time that they were doing that, I mean, Chris Barrett was literally sending creepy messages to chicks at work, telling them to play truth or dare, um, you know, 
sort of pro- creep- creepily, metaphorically leaning over them and telling them, you know, I'm a big boy at Bungie and I can, you know, I can definitely make things happen for you, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, I just, I, I, I'm just kind of speechless every single time I see this happen because I'm always like, look, every single day you, you, you learn another person's being a fucking creep on Twitter. But it's not every single day that you see someone being a creep and then realizing that they ended the career of somebody else for doing exactly the same thing that they are doing this whole time. So if you're interested in learning more about this, um, I can talk more about it. Um, This is kind of a new video for me. So if you're enjoying it, please like, please sub. And in the meantime, I'll see you all next time.